Since our last turn, our crew has been put in a difficult position. They are fighting on multiple fronts on the planet Pain. With the new arrival of the Bloodstorm Mercs, it has complicated things quite a bit. And not to mention, the abandoned on the outpost and the Mercs that they hired are also on their tail. Our heroes have been hiding in the capital, hoping to secure a ship and get it off planet as soon as possible. But at this point in time, the Unity forces have put a blockade, no ships in and out of the planet, most likely due to the fact that the Bloodstorm Mercs are on planet. With the crew still grieving the loss of their comrade, Meta, we will see how the rest of the turn fares, if they can finally get a win. The crew restocks their resources. At the cost of one credit, they have stockpiled all of the resources they will need for the next week. A little bit extra went on drinks and a little bit something to remember their fallen comrade. With a great night of partying, they ended up at the tables. This time, the users loaded dice to their advantage and fared a very well night, pulling four credits of winnings back to their pot. Then the crew breaks off in their own tasks. Ruby starts by training and gains one experience point. Luna goes and looks for a job. We have a few patrons. We've checked with all of them to see if there is any work going on at all. Due to the blockade, unfortunately, there is nothing available at this time or nothing that anyone wants to share with us due to the current circumstances that we are living in. So unfortunately, Luna comes back empty-handed. Now being short, one crew member meant that Captain Harlan had to go find someone to recruit. He took a long walk down the streets of the capital, talked to some of his contacts, went to some of local watering holes, and searched for someone that he could recruit on board of his yet-to-be acquired ship. Near the end of the night, he did find a prospect. The young man, Darrow Cricks, overheard Captain Harlan talking of some of his stories. He was intrigued, shared some of his. After a couple of hours of talking, Captain Harlan eventually offered him a position on board of our crew. Darrow Cricks is a human. Comes from the Wasteland Nomads, one of the many subgroups of nomads that live and reside on this planet. Now Darrow, he fights for glory. He really wants to make a difference in this world. He sees a lot of injustice and he wants to right the wrongs. But as a nomad, it only got him so far. He was a proven soldier in his group, but he wanted to move further ahead. He wants to explore and see the world, and the only way he knows how to do that would be to join a crew. And that night, connecting with Captain Harlan and exchanging stories, he knew that this was the right move for him. Leave the nomad life behind, become part of a crew, and change the world. Jetta hit the markets. She was looking to find something useful. In her ways, she was able to get some quality food and booze to replenish the stocks of the crew. She also caught the eye of a feral creature while she was out, kept following her around. The creature asked many questions on Jetta's whereabouts, where they were going, what her crew was like. Jetta was a bit uneasy, but answered the questions nonetheless. Then Jetta also dawned on her that now that there was a need of new crew members and Harlan was out looking for new people, maybe this creature may fill that void in their crew. So Jetta had a drink with this feral creature. They chatted for a couple hours and 
this person was interested to join the crew. So they proceeded to go back to inform the rest of the crew that they now had a new crew member. Yakar is a feral female creature. She lives her life in the slums of the megacity. Spent a lot of time working from contract to contract to make enough of a living to, to feed herself. Yakar wants to make a name of herself. This is why she was chasing after crew members to find a ship that she can belong to and build a name for herself in the galaxy. She also dresses the part with a cape and the flashy armor and it has all the ingredients of becoming an iconic hero. Unfortunately, when she speaks, you can tell that she's a bit simple and her primitive ways. Back in the hideout, Tetra attempts to repair one of our machine pistols that were broken in the last turn. She tries tirelessly with no avail. Crew members finally all meet up back at the hideout. The new recruits were introduced, but before they got comfortable, Yakar announces that they've been followed. When Jetta and Yakar came back, they noticed that there was one of the blood storm mercs right behind them. That merc would have reported their location and it was now compromised. So Harlan looked at the crew, told them to gear up and get ready for battle. They're going to take the battle to them. The crew found the Bloodstorm mercs in the slums of the city. There were six of them, which is a bit unusual because they usually only stay in packs of three or four. So they must have brought friends on this one. Obviously, the lieutenant was there with his long blade. The other ones all were kitted up with military rifles, and one had an auto rifle with a scope on it. And they were ready for battle. Obviously, they came for the bounty on Jetta, so we left Jetta behind at the outpost. Coming from the south, the crew sets up positions behind buildings, three buildings each spread out. The enemy, Bloodstorm Mercs, all group up behind one building. On the first turn, everyone advanced to a better position. Ruby gets into position to do a snapshot, fires and misses. The specialist answers back a burst on Ruby and stuns her. In the second round, Tetra gets to shoot first, but misses. The car gets into position, but then their specialist shoots back and downs Ruby. And another Merc shoots Tetra, but misses. Crew answers back on their own by firing into the Mercs. Darrow fires and stuns one of the mercs. Captain Harlock proceeds by firing and downing them, and Luna fires down and stuns another one. In round three, the crew gets a jump on the mercs. Quickly, Darrow fires, misses, so does Tetra. But Yakar a simple shot of her shotgun downs one of the mercs. Just as the crew starts to make some gains in the battlefield, it falls apart very quickly. It starts with a specialist. A specialist firing Darrow and downing him. Then a merc goes and picks down Luna right after. And the worst part of it, tosses over a thermal detonator to knock her out completely out of commission. Harlan tries to answer back, shoots and stuns that mercenary. In round four, the crew is outnumbered four to three. 
Petra fires and downs the lieutenant, tipping the scales of battle. Yakar and Harlan get shot by Mercs, stunning them both. The final Merc stuns Tetra. Harlan fires back and downs another Merc, leaving only the specialist and one Merc left. In round five, crew has taken advantage of the battlefield. With the heavy casualties suffered by the mercs, one of them panicked. This leaves only the specialist. The specialist takes a shot at Harlock, stunning him. Harlock quickly climbs on the building, attempts to fire back, but Tetra takes out the specialist by shooting him in the back, essentially ending the combat leaving us with a victory for the Hardline Syndicate. After the battle was over, Captain Harlan and the remaining crew looted the corpse. They were able to find two credits amongst all of the fallen. They picked up their downed comrades and load them up in a transport to bring them to the medics. They also noticed that the mercs left their speeders. Obviously they wouldn't need them anymore. They found a shatter axe on one of the speeders to kept it for their stores for a later battle. They also scrapped the speeders for one extra credit. After they wrapped everything up, they went back to their hideout. As soon as they got to the medic room, both Ruby and Daro were sitting looking at the captain. Knocked out, both of them made a full recovery. They just were kept for observation, but were given a clean bill of health. Then the doctor paused. You could tell by the expression on his face, there was no good news that was about to come out of his mouth next. Luna didn't make it. The detonator killed her on impact. It didn't only kill her, it destroyed everything that she had on her. The crew grieved and prepared for a second funeral. After the funeral, the crew decided to hone in on the experience earned in the last few combat missions. Especially, both Ruby and Tetra increased their combat skill, which will become very useful in further missions. It was about that time to head back to the shipyard and find out what ships available. After meeting the sales clerk, they brought out the catalog and found what the deal of the week was. The best deal that could be offered was a former diplomatic vessel at 90 credits. Cat and Harlock looked at their financial situation and they were just a few shy, even if they were going to get a bank loan. Again, with a sigh, maybe next time we'll get lucky and get off planet. After a long day's work, the crew settled down at the local pub for a drink. It was bittersweet. It was a first big victory as a group and another loss. They shared stories of Luna and also of Meta. As the night went on, the group got rowdier. He eventually started singing and dancing and making new friends. Some of the friends that they made actually became one of their patrons, a new patron sliding the business card and within some few winks and nods the secretive group provided them with an option to get more work if they ever wanted it. Captain Harlan is happy to oblige and grabs a business card. On a personal note the local food is sitting very well with Ruby. 
he's been indulging in some experiences and various different foods that the city can provide. With that, he's building some fond memories of Planet Pain. It has been announced that the Unity Blockade Order is still in effect. Although, there's been some rumblings in the background that this is about to be lifted. Captain Harlan, through some of his contacts, found out that the Bloodstorm Mercs are preparing to leave planet. After the battle, they realized that Jetta has been protected by a crew. She's no longer in the protection of the Nomad. The Harline Syndicate is too well equipped for them. And that venture is no longer profitable. So they have let go and are preparing to leave and drop the rivalry. In the conclusion of our turn, our crew has now achieved their first battle victory, but again has lost crew members. With two rivals still gunning for them, and without a ship, this still puts the crew in a very difficult position. So maybe in the next turn, we'll have a little bit more luck in gaining a ship and maybe getting through this blockade and changing planets, or chasing after the rivals so they don't keep looking over their shoulder and gaining a quest 